Coming to you live from the back room, this is Optimal Play. I'm Brandon. I'm Kyle. I'm Steven. And uh, I'm here to teach my friends and uh, you, if you find this useful, how to play Merchants of Magic, which is a uh, fantasy setting roll and write uh, by Rock Manor Games, who provided us with this copy. Thank you. Um, and it is set in like a, uh, well, it's set in the world of Set a Watch, like the board game. Mm. Um, so that's a fantasy adventure and go out and kill monsters game. I this is uh, this game also stars those people uh, as the ones that you are selling items to to try to make the most money. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So uh, yeah, we're going to be running uh, shops via ten rounds of uh, rolling dice, making some decisions, selling some objects, and then there's a little bit of end game scoring, and uh, then whoever has the most uh, coins, like the 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 Money, coins, whatever you want to call them, they're basically victory points. It's not an actual currency that you'll be doing anything with. It's just uh, points at the end. Um, right before uh, I go any further, I'll just say, hey, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. It's the only way to support us. So that would be cool. And if you uh, dislike it, like the video. That's how we vote. Yeah. Or dislike yes. it. Yes. You can dislike the video, too. It's it's engagement for the algorithm. Uh, it helps us just as much. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so, like it or not, interact. And if you subscribe, uh, you'll become aware uh, in a week or two, I believe it's going to be October 22nd, we're going to be streaming more Merchants of Magic uh, with prototype versions of the expansions that are on Kickstarter right now. So, should be fun. I've actually played this game seven or eight times now since they sent it to us, and wow. uh, it's, it's great. It's really good. So I'm excited to try the expansions. Um, with that, let me uh, take us in. The, uh, so this is the setup game. What we've done is given everyone one of these sheets. You're just going to play on one side of it. We've put these potions in the middle. They come in different colors, but they are all just potions. There's no actual difference between uh, between them. That's frustrating. Four dice on the table. There's uh, two mastery cards, which are for some end game or uh, there there's some shared objectives uh, with some points available. We'll get to them more later. We've given everyone a sponsored adventurer, which is a card whose orders only can be filled by the person they were dealt to. And then we have uh, these cards. These represent like adventurers that are mingling in our stores right now. So even though what's on them is like shocking pendant, they are. Uh, it is a person who wants a shocking pendant and might leave their, our store soon if they don't get it fast mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. um, we dealt three of these to each person face up. The only wrinkle to that is that some of them, like this fiery braces of the dragon in front of me, has two enchantments. These colored swatches with symbols. Mm -hmm. If all of your cards have two enchantments, you redeal. Because yeah. that just means it's, it's a set of very difficult to fulfill orders. Um, you just redeal to that person. And this is uh, two cards per person in a seven or eight player game and four cards per person in a one or two player game. Otherwise it's three. So uh, there, each round has four phases. I'll just uh, talk through them and then talk end game scoring and that's the game. Uh, the first thing that we do is roll the dice. Would you roll the dice, Kyle? I would love to. Those are the dice rolls. All right, uh, we. Ooh, that's a it's pretty that's low. interesting roll. Yeah. So uh, these are these dice are used. Um, they become materials depending on the decisions that we make that we'll be using to craft or research uh, the the different um, different types of items and the different enchantments on the items and maybe some charms that give us some end game scoring and stuff. So. Um, I'll just do this. You don't need to dirty a sheet. I'll, I'll demonstrate here. The first thing we're going to do after we roll is we track the rounds and what dice were rolled with these 10 tiny little columns for ants that I'm sure are not picking up on camera, but they're in like size six font. They're labeled one through 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write down the die results here and we would all write this down. So the, the D6, the red die was a four. The D8 that's purple is a two. The D10 that's uh, yellow is a two. And the D12 that's green is a one. So that's the first phase of the turn. The next one is utilizing them to uh, make progress on our crafting and research. So what uh, all of us are going to simultaneously do is choose two of these dice to resolve. Hmm. Uh, whichever two you select, you are going to circle on here just to kind of track, mainly because sometimes it's a roll and write, sometimes you use one, it chains into something else, and then you come back like, wait, how many have I used? <laughs> so that's the main reason for circling them, is, is to kind of track your turn. Uh, the the uh, What you do with it is you mark off a circle that uh, that die can be used for. So these uh, numbers come in columns here and they have the dice indicated at the top. So the uh, D6, the red die, can be used in the steel, wood, or leather column. The D8 can be used in the wood, leather, or elemental column, and so on. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so if I'm using this four, I'm going to use it here. And then the numbers here on the left side of your sheet, you see there's a line down the middle. This side is called crafting. This side is called research. Yep. On the left side, and there's a little arrow above each number, mm -hmm. you need to use dice that are the indicated number or higher. So with this four, I can check off in the leather column here, this three on the backpack row. So that's what I'll do with that. Um, on the other side, the research side, you are using the same pool of dice, but to mark off a bubble, the die has to be the uh, number or lower. Mm. So uh, lower is actually, like a one is an incredible yeah, number on the D12, roll. because the D12 is only on the side where you want low numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so you'll mark off uh, two, basically two bubbles circling the two dice that you use, like I'm going to use, say, the D10 also. Um, if you mark off all of the bubbles on one of these rows, and again, keep in mind, it's divided in half, so like back, backpack has nothing to do with fiery. See that these are two different things. Mm -hmm. When you complete one, you can circle the coin value there. You've earned those points, and you can gain a potion. Uh, you do all that immediately during the same phase. Uh, the main thing that potions are for is when you resolve a die, you can spend any number of potions to modify that dice, that die's amount just for you by plus or minus that much. Okay. Uh, that's necessary sometimes. Like you can see, to craft plate armor, you are going to have to get an 8 on a d6. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, so potions, or there's a couple other ways to, um, a couple other ways to like mark any circle. Uh, that's, that's going to be necessary. Um, so the other thing going on with dice is you have some bubbles up here that say extra dice. There are three spots here that have no cost, so three times over the course of the game you can mark off one of these to use an extra die in a round. Mm. Uh, it has to be an additional different die, you cannot reuse sure, one of the sure. ones you've chosen yeah. to use. If you want to do it a fourth, fifth, and sixth time over the course of the game, there's an escalating cost in potions, yep. so you have to pay to use those bubbles. And um, then the other thing that you're doing, all as part of this resolution round or phase, is filling orders. So. These customers in front of you with their orders, like the shocking pendant, as soon as uh, at any point I have the pendant crafted and the shocking enchantment researched, I can just fill that order, take those points. Mm. Uh, these cards are not actually, here's the deck by the way, these cards are not actually pink, they are sleeved at the moment. Uh, when you do that, when you take a card from your row, you deal a new one in its place face down for now. We'll flip mm. it later. Uh, but you can, there's no, you're not spending anything to claim these, it's just if you have access to all of the components that the card requires, like Shield of the Orcs, I would need Shield, and of the Orcs, <laughs> I would take, take that card. Uh, your Sponsored Adventurer works similarly, uh, like my Knight wants a Backpack of the Dragons, a Sword of the Dragons, and a Helmet of the Dragons. But as I fulfill those orders in the same way, by researching Backpack and of the Dragons, I mark off the Sponsored Adventurer section, where when the first order is completed, I gain three potions. When the second order is completed, I can mark any circle. And when the third order is completed, I can mark another any circle, and I, that's how you earn the points that are printed on it. Wow, mark any circle. Yeah. That seems good. It is good. <laughs> yeah. So, question. Mm -hmm. um, to get the plate armor at 8 to 8, do I have to get that in one roll, or can I get part of it in one roll and then another part in the next turn? That's a great question. You can do it across any number of turns. Okay. So you can mark you can mark off one of those bubbles the first round, and then come back to it the fifth round, and got do it. another one. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe you needed extra dice. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So yeah, you need to you need to complete all of the indicated things to get the thing. Yes. And then each bubble you get, you get a potion, or just when you complete the thing? Uh, only when you complete something. Okay, got yeah. it. When you circle the points that are on that row, that's when you take one potion. Uh, but yeah, but each thing that you've researched or crafted can be used any number of times, right? Yeah, so yeah, once, yeah. once I've created the, a backpack, I can fill any number of backpack orders. So you're like the backpack salesman of our town. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Backpack specialist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of elves, of dragons, you got it, if it's backpacks. For sure. Um, the... Uh, so that's it for this phase. Oh, I didn't really touch on charms. Um, you, you research them the same way uh, that you do other things. The Glamour Potion Supplier, just you follow the texture, gain three potions instead of one when you research that. Uh, the other three each give you end game scoring depending on how many cards you've collected of certain types. Mm, so interesting. So that's what those do. Um, up, up to you whether they're part of your strategy. 
Uh, the third out of the four things that happen in a round is we check the masteries. These are, you've played Roll and Write, so these are just some central objectives that everyone can go for. They even, once someone satisfies them, they flip over and are worth fewer points to everyone else. What? A again, roll and Write? If you've played a Roll and Write, that's a pretty familiar aspect. <laughs> uh, so the way that all of these work is that they call out a certain... Um, type of, of material, and those are the labels at the top of the columns, mm. and they want you to mark a certain number of circles in that column. So like Leather Artisan is to mark six circles in the Leather Material column. So specifically, that column of numbers, you need to mark six bubbles to complete that objective. Uh, two of these were dealt out at random, one from the crafting side and one from the research side for the game. Um, if multiple people get them in the same round, then we can... Or uh, then they both get the eight points and flip it over and it's four points for anyone else who gets it. Sure. And then the final thing that happens in a round is the customer's move. So uh, the three cards in front of you, take the one that is leftmost, pass it to the person on your left. Mm. Take a card from the person on your right, so hand me this one, Steven. Yep. And you rotate that one. Mm. And these cards are every all of the ten rounds of the game. They're going to constantly rotate, and it's actually it's it's uh, oh. immediately when we pass these that any face down ones that came out get flipped. Got it. So and that's at, the end round. Uh, that's the last part of the round. Okay. And then the very next thing we'll do is roll the dice again, fill them into column number two, and repeat ten times. Fun. Um, yeah. So kind of just like a slight tip at the start of the game, you're very unlikely to fill the orders dealt to you. You're more likely to look at the person to your right and start working on filling those cards that are going to rotate funny. to you in rounds two, three, and four. Uh, that's been my experience, at least. Maybe the one on the right most, if it's relatively easy. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, or, you know, there's if you, if you get a, a shocking backpack or something you can do with, like, just an extra die, like, maybe you knock it out in the first turn. It's possible. I've seen it. Uh, but I lost the game where I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so at the end of the game, you go down, there's this scoring row at the bottom. I think it, we've touched on all of the things you fill in into crafting and spell research. You fill in the values of the bubbles you've circled. Material mastery and energy mastery, you fill in the objectives if you've filled them. Completed orders is the cards you've collected. Charms bonus is any of the end game scoring bonuses here. Uh, points from your sponsored adventurer if you've completed it. And then you add them up and compare to your friends and trash talk if you won. Any that, questions? Is that mandatory? Yes, actually. Okay, yeah. great. I'm ready, you loser. <laughs> it's only if you win. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, we will, uh, if you're watching this on stream, we are live streaming right, right now. We're going to keep going and play play practice game and then film a playthrough too. So uh, if you're watching this on uh, the YouTube channel after the fact, the playthrough will probably get posted the day after this. So as long as you're not an... Uh, Early bird doesn't get the worm here. <laughs> as long as you're watching this, not the day we posted it. We also have a playthrough up you can check out. So look for that. Um, thanks, gents. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Be optimal.